Hello everyone, in this video we're going to be solving another beautiful problem from Romania. We have 2 to the power x squared plus 3 to the power x to the fourth equals 5 to the power x to the fifth. And we're going to be solving for x values. Now, when you see an equation like this, obviously the first response is usually guess and check and you can find a solution most of the time. And I'm pretty sure you did find a solution. Did you get x equals 1? Yes. Why does x equals 1 work? Because 1 raised to any power is 1. And notice that when I say something like 2 to the x squared, you should understand that x squared will be performed first and then 2 to the power of that. That's what, what it means when we don't use parentheses. Because if we did use parentheses, it would look like this, and definitely this would be 2 to the power 2x. That's a different thing. So make sure you know that clarification. And now, because any power of x in this case is going to be 1, we have 2 plus 3 equals 5, right? That's why x equals 1 works. The million dollar question is, are there any other solutions, or is x equals 1 the only solution? Make a guess at this time, and we're going to go ahead and check. So, in order to be able to solve this problem, at the end, we're also going to take a look at a graph. But, algebraically, we're going to be using some inequalities. So, we're going to look at x on different intervals. For example, we said that, okay, x equals 1 is a valid solution, right? We can check. What happens if x is not 1? Or, what if x is greater than 1, for example, right? That would be a good one to look at. So, if x is greater than 1... Here's what's going to happen. Now consider the ratio 2 to the power x squared divided by 5 to the power x to the fifth. Now, you're going to see in a little bit why this is helpful, but just bear with me on that. Now notice that when x is greater than 1, higher powers of x will be higher, right? Think about something like a 2. What is 2 squared? 4. What is 2 to the fifth power? 32. You see, the numbers get bigger and bigger as you raise them to higher powers. So, here, 5 to the x to the 5th is definitely going to be greater than 2 to the x squared because x to the 5th is going to be greater than x squared. And 5 is already greater, but that's going to make it even greater. So, this ratio is going to be less than 2 over 5. Why? Because if they're both equal to 1, we're going to get 2 over 5. But if the denominator is bigger, our fraction is going to be less than 2 over 5. Make sense? I hope it does. Now we're going to be doing something similar for these two. 3 to the power x to the 4th divided by 5 to the power x to the 5th. Obviously, if x is greater than 1, x to the 5th is going to grow faster or it's going to be bigger. And this ratio is going to be less than 3 to... 3 over 5. I was going to say 3 to the power, but it's 3 over 5. Now, here's what we're going to do. A lot of times, you take two inequalities and add them, and you get something nicer. When you add these two inequalities, you're going to get 2 to the power x squared. And allow me to add the numerators, because we have a common denominator. That was the purpose. This gives us 2 over 5 plus 3 over 5, which is equal to 1. So, we proved something very important. This ratio or quotient is less than 1. You know what that means? It means 2 to the power x squared plus 3 to the power x to the fourth is less than 5 to the power x to the fifth. And where does this come from? If x is greater than 1. No, we notice that if x is greater than 1, then we won't have a solution because these two expressions cannot be equal because one of them is bigger than the other. Make sense? So for x is greater than 1, we have no solutions. So we're going to go at another interval. What happens if x is between 0 and 1? To keep a long story short, I'm going to give you a shortcut here because we're going to look at the next case and that's going to be a more detail. But if x is between 0 and 1, the opposite is going to happen because this time the smaller powers are going to produce larger numbers. I mean, think about it. You have... 2 to the power 1 fourth and 3 to the power 1 over 16, right? This is going to be like the fourth root. This is going to be like the 16th root. And the 
difference is going, even though three is bigger, this one fourth is actually going to compensate for that difference because 16th power is going to be very, very small. Make sense? I hope it does. I mean, algebra, algebra, we can prove it, but I think at this point, this is good enough. So this is going to imply 2 to the x squared plus 3 to the x to the fourth is less than 5 to the power x to the fifth. Make sense? Okay. Now, so what is going on here? We have this... We don't have any solutions either, right? So, what do we do with that? Here's what we're going to do. We're going to be looking at another interval. What happens if x is less than 0? Because we checked everything else, right? So now, if x is less than 0, here's what's going to happen. This is going to be a little bit more detailed, so bear with, bear with me on that. So if x is less than 0, think about it. x is negative, then x squared is going to be positive right? So 1 minus x squared is going to be less than 1 because we're subtracting a positive quantity from 1. And this will imply that 2 to the power 1 minus x squared is less than 2 to the power 1, which is 2. And then you'll see in a little bit why I'm using this. And then 1 minus x to the fifth, since x is negative, x to the fifth is going to be negative. 1 minus that is going to be positive, And it's actually going to be greater than 1 because we're adding something to 1. Make sense? So this will imply that 2 to the power 1 minus x to the fifth is greater than 2 to the first, which is 2. So what do I do with these two inequalities? Am I adding them? No, not this time. But think about it. One of them is less than 2. The other one is greater than 2. So we can easily compare them. Putting 2 in the middle, we can say that 2 to the power 1 minus x squared is less than 2 to the power 1 minus x to the fifth. Make sense? I hope it does. Now, here's what we're getting at. Now, separate these two things, 2 over 2 to the x squared and 2 over 2 to the x to the fifth. Every quantity is positive, so we're allowed to divide like this. And then by kind of switching these things around, you're going to get the following. 2 to the x squared divided by 2 to the x to the fifth is greater than 2 over 5. And similarly, of course, we're going to go through the same steps, but there's no need like uh, same thing. This is going to be greater than 3 over 5. And if you add these two inequalities, you're going to get 2 to the power x squared plus 3 to the x to the fourth divided by 5 x to the fifth, which is a common denominator, is greater than 2 over 5 plus 3 over 5, which is 1. Guess what this means? This means we still don't have a solution because this implies 2 to the x squared plus 3 to the x to the fourth is greater than 5 to the x to the fifth. And this means we don't have a solution on this interval either. The only solution comes from x equals 1. Let's go ahead and take a look at the graph, shall we? And then we'll just finish up with that. All right. So the graph of two functions, a tale of two cities. We have 2 to the x squared plus 3 to the x to the fourth, which is kind of like a parab uh, parabola, kind of parabolic curve. It's not a parabola, but it kind of looks like it. And the other one is kind of weird because it's an exponential. Think about exponential functions, how they grow. And these two functions actually intersect at a single point, And that happens at x equals 1. And this brings us to the end of this video. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you next time with another video. Until then, be safe, take care, and bye-bye.